bro. What is up you guys? This is Alan Hamilton and I'm really excited about today's video because I spent a lot of the weekend working on my EQ EMU server which is always a lot of fun. I just I had gotten out of it for a little while and I'm just kind of diving back in and I'm having a lot of fun with it. I've actually done some really cool things that I will be telling you and showing you about later. But today I just kind of wanted to show you the three programs that I use the most when I'm working on my server. I mean there are so many different programs that I use, you know, certain things to access assets and say that ten times fast. And some things it's easier to, you know, edit them in one program and then some things another program and then it's it, it can get kind of complicated but once you get it down they synergize so well. So the first one you're looking at right now is um, Navicat Lite. Now I use the Lite version because it's free and it doesn't cost a whole bunch of money. Um, I can't remember where I got it actually. I had to go kind of surfing for it. So <laughs> I'll see if I can find it and then put the link in the description box. If not, you might need to go digging for it because, you know, I, I don't have the link. So what we're looking at right here is the database. This is um, you know, all the information is saved here, so that would be characters, items, everything you see here is saved in the database. So this is a, a, a program that I like to use for kind of like bulk editing, so like if you're creating a bunch of different NPCs at one time, and you don't want to sit there and wait for the EOC, which is the next one to load. <clears throat> this is actually pretty cool, and I'll kind of show you uh, what I was working on yesterday is I kind of wanted to equal I God I hope this is finished <laughs> I kind of I, I wanted to uh, clean out some of the unnecessary and worthless loot out of Crushbone so I was in the loot table loot drop all that fun stuff items let's close out of these quest globals when you first look at it, it doesn't seem like it makes a lot of sense. It really doesn't. But once you start kind of learning how to use it, then you're like, oh, okay, I kind of get what's going on here. So just for like one mob, just for one guy and his loot system, you need four different tables. So there's the loot drop. So for example, like I said, I was working in Crushbone. So for the slavers, I have a loot drop table for the slaver key and then we go this is just the table and then these are the entries in the table so I know I know this is like what am I looking at these are all numbers I don't know what they mean because that's what I was thinking when I started too. don't worry about it we will definitely go into this in a later video and then loot table loot table entries so this would be like the loot drops so you gather every you gather everything into a loot drop and then you put multiple loot drops into the loot table and then you assign the loot table to an NPC. It sounds awful, but you'll get it. You'll get it. You just got to dive into it. And expect to fuck it up a few times. I have started my server over several times. I don't even know like god, at least four from scratch. <clears throat> so this is actually it's really easy to kind of oh, I think I closed out of the NPCs but it's really easy to just access see how these are a bunch of the locations are a bunch of zeros we'll refresh it because I actually updated it in a different program so <clears throat> this kind of just breaks everything down you can edit bulk entries like I said you know I the reason you saw the locations were zeros because I was just you know plugging and chugging like all of these like this is uh, this was actually for the bot so you can unlock um, multiple bots which is another video of its own it's so weird doing like the first video in a series and you're just like oh my god there's so much I want to put into this video but I can't so <clears throat> that's why I use this program because it's really good for bulk editing if you want to spawn a bunch of NPCs, what I did here personally is I wanted one in every starting zone. So I just created a bunch of blank ones and I started filling in the uh, spawn group ID 
and I just left the locations as zero because I then went into the game, which is, you know, another program I use, and then updated it that way. So that's, I think, pretty much of an overview of Navicat Lite. Uh, it's, it gets right to the nitty gritty of it. it it's, it's useful. I, I, I quite like it. Now, I also kind of want to let you guys know that I don't run the server off of my personal computer. I actually have a separate computer in my living room plugged right into the, uh, the modem. So, you know, it, it doesn't get interrupted on Wi-Fi. So that is why I am using TeamViewer. TeamViewer is great because you can control another computer from your personal computer. So if you're wondering why is he using TeamViewer, that's why. So the second program I use, you've probably heard me refer to it before, the EOC, the EQ EMU Operations Center for Development, is awesome. You'll notice that my information is blanked out just, you know, for privacy purposes. This is great though, I mean, it really, if you're looking to have everything put into a nice, tidy little UI for you, this is definitely it. So, and if you see me looking over here, it's because I, I'm, I have to run it for resolution purposes. I have to run it on this uh, monitor. So, verify connection, and then you will notice that it says right here that I've made a connection, and we'll log in. And then it's got this neat little home page that's just, you know, it looks like it's got some information. Honestly, I haven't looked at it yet. Like, I've just, <laughs> I've just kind of uh, used this right here. So, if, you'll, if you've seen my last video, you'll remember I said that every race has an ID, and I just kind of want to elaborate on that now. Um, they really, really did an awesome job with this. If you notice, it's got a screenshot of every race, and it has their ID, and if you decide that you want to update the, what is it, the underscore chr dot txt file, <clears throat> just so that it will actually load these models when it loads the zone, uh, it's, it's got a great system for that too. You just click here, and then you can click on... Um, and then you just copy and paste this into the the character file. So you'll notice it has some other cool stuff. It's also got a spell icon viewer, item icon viewer, and weapon viewer. But what I prefer to do is so the short sword. <clears throat> now the reason I didn't show you like the icon and the weapon viewer is for a very simple reason. We just click here and it opens its own. And then it takes a little bit for like all the icons to load, but you just be patient. You can always leave it open and use it later. So here they are. They all start appearing, and then you can choose a different icon. There's some I've never seen before. Uh, they, there's like a gun icon around here somewhere, and it's probably up on the screen right now, and I don't see it. It's like a pistol. Yeah, I don't feel like looking for it right now, because it, it has so many different icons, and it does take a little bit for them to load, but you know, first world problems. So let's just choose a simple, whatever the hell these are called, not Shantok, no, these are the Shantoks, okay, we'll just do that. So. There we go. It's updated this. Now let's update the actual appearance to God. Anything your heart desires. And it goes pretty far in. So we'll just because we picked the icon for Shantok. But if you scroll down, it's got more than just the classics. And it's actually organized into expansion, which is pretty awesome. So we've got Planes of Power. If you keep going down, it goes all the way to the current appearances in, uh, in live and in the store and whatnot. It's pretty cool. I mean, it's pretty in-depth. If you're going for like 
a more modern feel for your game, you're definitely want to go and gonna want to check some of the the higher IDs out. But my server, I'm going for classic, so I like to stick in this area. I'm sure I will eventually start straying, maybe into Loose Lin or Planes of Power, but I don't know how far I will stray after that. So those are some of the newer ones. They've also got spells. Spells are awesome. Like it's, you can really edit them. And I also want to let you guys know that when you do edit loot tables, when you do edit items, you have to reset the server, which is super easy. It's just kind of a nuisance to have to log out of the game, restart it, and go back in. But once again, first world problems. So. <clears throat> this doesn't have everything that we need right now. I know they're working diligently on it and they're doing a great job so far. But this is it's an old older uh, editing I guess program what would you call it it's it's a website it's a link which will be linked in the description box. Uh, but it, it's got a similar, you know, you can edit NPCs, you can edit items. The items in in the PEQ editor is not quite as well developed as the the newer ones but in a pinch it works okay and the third one that I like to use is the actual client itself you'd be surprised at all the stuff you can actually do in the client <clears throat> you have to be a GM though you can't just log into somebody else's you know and do that but you can actually edit different, you can change people's races, classes, whatever. So you'll notice the priest of discord here is female, that's actually dictated by the quest, which is a video of its own. Okay, I don't like that these two NPCs are so close to each other, so let's move that guy, Ferric Windrunner, let's move him over here. So, just find a nice position, find where you want him to be. There we go, close enough, good enough. And we are going to spawn fix. So like I said, remember how I left the, the location for those NPCs blank? This is why. Now from now on he will spawn here. This is his new spawn point. Now like let's say we want to change his race so NPC edit will make him an erudite. I think 3 is erudite. Oh. You have to specify you want to change his race and let's make him female. Boom. <clears throat> so that's actually, well, I'm going to change it back because <laughs> I don't want some random erudite here, but a really great way to kind of like edit NPCs, um, at least NPCs you want to stay permanent, because I don't know if you guys noticed, but I have a script that will randomize not only his name, that's why he's got such a funky name, is because it's randomized, and also randomizes his race and appearance. So he could be a wood elf, he could be a half elf, male, female, he could be wearing plate. Um, that's a video of its own, but I just, just in case you were looking out and you wanted to know, uh, that I will be showing you guys that later. So thank you guys for watching, I hope this was helpful, I hope you learned something, and I hope that this will help you work on your server, or just appreciate kind of what goes into running your own emulated server. So you guys have a great day and I'll see you in the next one.